Hello, my friends, and welcome once again to our weekend worship video, this time for September 5th, 2021. My friends, I'm so glad you are joining us for this time of prayer and worship. I hope you enjoy listening to this wonderful music and also to the readings. And I'll share a few thoughts in a few moments as well about the scripture readings that we have for this week. My friends, it's good to be with you. I have a couple announcements to make before we begin, just so you note on your calendar that we will have a slightly different worship schedule starting this Sunday. We invite you, if you like, to join us on Zoom at 9 o'clock, where we'll read the scriptures, we'll have a little discussion and reflection together as a group, and then we'll have some time to pray for one another and for the world. So that will be at 9 o'clock on Sunday. Then at 10.30, you can either join us at that same Zoom link to be able to watch our live stream of Sunday Eucharist, or you can come to church and come into this incredible space to worship with us in person. Again, that will be on Sunday at 10.30. My friends, this weekend we have some wonderful readings. We have a reading from the letter of James to the early Christian community in which he reminds us that God shows no partiality, that God is a God who loves all people. And so we're going to reflect on that a little bit this weekend. And Jesus, too, brings us out as well within the gospel. So, my friends, do stay with us as we listen to the scriptures proclaimed, hear some wonderful music, and reflect together on God's word. Let us begin our time of prayer with our opening collect for this Sunday. Let us pray. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that richly bearing the fruit of good works, we may be, we may by your, you be richly rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. James. 
My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please. While to the one who is poor, you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. It is not, is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice, but a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. 
Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that, you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took a side in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were open, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered him to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of Christ. Well, my friends, we got some powerful readings for this weekend. I don't know about you, but the letter from James really challenges me this weekend. And I'm sure it challenged that early Christian community. James makes an excellent point and a very strong point that our God is a God who shows no partiality. God does not judge us based upon our wealth, our position in society, uh, or what things were for, what things were against. God approaches all of us as we are, and God loves us as we are. The problem is sometimes we humans tend to give preference to certain persons over others. And in so doing, we often ignore others, and our actions can sometimes oppress others. And this is what I think James is getting at in his letter this weekend. It's something that I've been thinking a lot about. Now, James, certainly in this reading for this weekend, talks about not giving preference to rich over the poor, but rather loving the poor more so because God's heart is with the poor and with the oppressed. Now, for many of us, we might say, well, I don't give preference to the rich. You know, I treat everybody equally. But I think we have to really think about that for a moment. Now, certainly James uses the example of rich and poor, which I think we need to listen to very carefully this weekend, because certainly we need to pay attention to God's beloved poor among us. But I also think you and I show preference to people based upon ideological preference, uh, maybe place in society, whether we like them, their political views. Uh, we live in a day and time, in my opinion, a day and time in which we're highly polarized. And our polarization is slowly tearing us apart, moving us in different directions. But if we Christians take serious what James is saying and what Jesus exemplifies in his life, we cannot ignore people based upon their class, their belief, their sexuality, their gender, you name it. We got to love all God's people. I know that sounds like a simple idea, and we hear it often, but do we really wrestle with what that means? Do we really reach out to those with whom we may have trouble talking with? For example, as we're in the time of a political election, we sometimes get into fights with persons who we greatly disagree with. And sometimes we intentionally ignore persons because of their political views. But as Christians, we're called to actually sit at the table, to listen, 
to talk and to try to understand one another, recognizing that we may not ever fully agree with each other, but how do we sit and listen? One of the things I often think about is, in the church we are to live another way. A way that does not uh, marginalize people, a way that does not exclude people because of their beliefs or their identity, but a way that invites all people in, welcomes all. And a place, the church, ought to be a place where we can sit and talk openly and share knowing that we are loved, loved by God and loved by one another. Again, the letter from James is not an easy passage to hear this week, because I think, at least I know for myself, that it's very easy to not always pay attention to certain persons because I may not like them or they may not be what I'm drawn to. But God calls us to a generous, and love, a love that reaches out particularly to those who are marginalized, oppressed, and to those who may be different from us. Amen.
In the time after Pentecost, may the breath of the Holy Spirit enliven and renew our parish as we welcome our pastor, Don Byers. Like the apostles, may we at St. Anne's be open to fresh challenges and to new ways of living our commitment to each other. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us continue to pray for those who have safeguarded our lives during the pandemic. Let us pray that vaccines will be available for all, both in Canada and throughout the world. May the Holy Spirit inspire us to find creative paths toward a just economic recovery for our city. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray to the Holy Spirit that we may discern her gifts given to us for the building of God's kingdom. May the flame of creativity inspire artists in every field, men and women of science, farmers, office workers, and laborers. May all work be blessed in God's eyes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the mystical body of Christ, pray that we may embrace every race, religion, and nation as beloved members of God's kingdom. Let us pray for the leaders of Canada and of the world and for the work of peace and reconciliation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the apostles received the gifts of tongues, let us ask the Holy Spirit for the gift of listening to the stories which haunt our city in the words of immigrants and refugees, of those without homes, and those who bear painful emotional burdens. Let us listen and respond with care and attention. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us contemplate with awe and wonder the mystery of creation from the starry heavens to the humble life of plants. In the season of rebirth, let us pray for all nesting birds and animals with their young. May their revelation of God's love inspire us to protect and care for the natural world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Hi there, thanks for joining us and Happy New Year. Not the calendar year or liturgical year, of course, but uh, functionally for many folks, this first week of September really demarcates the beginning of a new year with notably kids finally going back to school for the first time <coughs> since Easter. Also this week, Mary Lou returns from a well-deserved month off and Dawn is back from squeezing in one last week of summer vacation. And our ministry advisory council returns from uh, well, never taking a month off with our next meeting this Wednesday, September 8th at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. And if electoralism is your thing, uh, advanced polls for the upcoming federal election also open later this week, I believe. Uh, so head on into that voting booth and tick the box next to whomever you think will, as Paul instructs the Church of Corinth, do everything in love for all people and all of creation. September also brings with it a new worship schedule, uh, which Dawn will no doubt tell you about in greater detail. Uh, but which in addition to this Saturday video and the Sunday worship in person and over live stream uh, will include an early Sunday Zoom hour, a Eucharist on Wednesday and Thursday, and a morning prayer and day of prayer on Thursday. Uh, so please find what works for your schedule and your needs and join us. Uh, thank you for your ongoing generosity. Please enjoy a blessed and restful Labor Day. Uh, thanks to all workers laboring away in every corner of God's vineyard. Uh, take care and God bless. Once again, my friends, it is so good that you join us for our weekend worship video. I really appreciate everyone who takes time to put these videos together, our readers and our ever faithful Thomas, our videographer, for putting it together. I hope you find these worship videos to be meaningful and to help you as you continue to grow in your faith, as you continue to learn how to walk with Jesus in your life. So my friends, I'm always glad you join us for this. Also, my friends, I invite you to join us for worship here at the church as well. We are open, as I've said, the past few weeks, and it's so great to be in this marvelous space. I invite you to check our website at saintanne.ca for our complete worship schedule, but you will see that we have a number of new services. But I want to call particular attention to our Sundays. Sunday worship will now take place at both 9 o'clock and 10.30. The 9 o'clock worship will be on Zoom. It will be a chance for all those who come in on Zoom to have conversation, to hear the scriptures read, and to pray together and to discuss the readings as well. My friends, this will take a similar format as what we had in the past few months when we were unable to be open. So I do hope for those of you who really enjoyed that discussion, that time of fellowship, to join us on Zoom on Sundays at nine o'clock for discussion, prayer, and reading of scriptures. It's a wonderful opportunity, and I personally enjoy hearing your thoughts. In fact, you might just end up making me change my sermon a little bit for 10.30 if I hear some good things. Speaking of 10.30, so we'll have Zoom worship at 9, and then 10.30 we'll be here in the church to celebrate Holy Eucharist. And you can come in, you can join, you might be able to see behind me we have pews marked with little numbers, so we have plenty of space in here for you to be able to come and to be with us. My friends, I really do invite you to come down and to join us for worship. Now again, I realize not everyone may feel comfortable worshiping in person at this time. So we will live stream our Sunday worship again at the same Zoom link. All these details you may find on our website at saintanne.ca. My friends, a couple of other announcements I'd like to make. First of all, uh, do mark your calendars for our community dinner, which is September 18th at 5.15 p.m. We are really looking for volunteers, people who can help us out. Everything from simple jobs as maybe putting some bags together in which the meals can be put, or helping us serve the meals on that evening. If you're able to help, please send me a note and I'll be sure to connect you. My email will be posted at the bottom of the screen here. Also, my friends, this week we'll have our monthly MAC meeting at 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday evening, and that will be on Zoom. MAC is our Ministry Advisory Council, and it's a wonderful group that gets together to 
not only reflect on the ministry that we have, but also discern how God is calling us uh, forward in the future. So do join us for that. Also, I got really great news from David Roder, one of our wardens, who shared with me that our Gameathon, the one that was organized by Arlene, uh, was quite the success. Apparently, we raised over two thousand dollars in support of Faith Work. So I'm really grateful to everybody who did that. My friends, know that we are here for you. Know that you're important to us, and know that this church is open for you to be able to come in, to sit, to read, to pray. As I mentioned in the beginning of the announcements today, uh, we have a new worship schedule. And that not only includes Sundays for worship at 9 and 10.30, but also we'll have Eucharist on Wednesdays at 10.30. And on Thursdays, we'll have morning prayer at 9.30, which will also be live streamed on Facebook. So if you're at work and you want to just take a break and pray with us, do so. Or you can come down to the church all day Thursday and sit in and pray. And finally, you can join us for Eucharist on Thursday evenings at 5.30. Know all of you are welcome here. And if you need anything, if you need prayers or anything, you know, if you just simply want somebody to talk to, know that I'm here for you. You may reach me at my email, which we have posted at the bottom of the screen. My friends, may God bless you, may God keep you, and may God let God's face shine upon you always. Take care.